Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. The season premiere, season four, episode one of Greenleaf, Original Sin, that's coming up next. where we notice the church is a little bit different. Calvary looks a little different. The colors are different. We see the banner on the pulpit that reads Harmony and Hope. What's that? And it's this girl, she's singing at the front stage and she's just giving her all and the church is clapping and everybody's having a good time. And Charity is just looking at the singer like, and it immediately reminded me of that episode of Living Single where Regine was trying to sing solo for the choir. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to hear the key if someone sends it. There's never been a time in my life when he's let me fall. There's never been a time when he did not answer my call. Man, that scene is still hilarious. Keep in mind that the lady that plays Charity, Cece Wines, that, that's her sister in real life. So church is happening. Some people are really into it. Some people are not because this is a new dig and they don't know what's going on. And the family's giving the stage a side eye and just it just feels weird, right? So we see a speaker. It's a gentleman. He gets to the front of the stage who we later learn his name is Bob Ritmore. He is the president of Harmony and Hope. And he gets to the pulpit and he is so culturally disconnected to what is going on. He gets to the front and he says, wow, <laughs> the music was great. There's a lot of hats here. <laughs> so many hats. And they do a close-up to a lady that got a hat on and she like, you talking about me? Because I got a hat on. So they pan around and they do all of that and he says, you know what, welcome to Harmony and Hope and some people are clapping like, okay. And he introduces Grace and as Grace is coming to the pulpit, he says, make it quick. So tell her, you know, don't come up here preaching all day, make it quick, summarize it and that's it. So we see Grace, she gets to the pulpit and then we cut to the next scene. So then we have Sophia, you know, she's Grace's daughter and she's talking to a member of the church and the lady is just like, girl, Sophia, where you been? Like, I haven't seen you in church, you know, for a while. And you know how people do. And she says, well, you know, I'm preparing for school and it's just stuff I gotta do and I've just been really busy. And the lady's like, well, September is, you know, far away. And Grace just jumps in like, well, you know, it's a preschool, you know, it's like before you get to college, kind of like prepping you and all this other stuff. And she says, oh, okay, well, that's nice. And as they're speaking, you have Lady May and you have Bishop Jacob. They're walking up to Grace and Sophia. And she says very clearly to Sophia, could you please show me where the coffee cafe is? You know, they've moved everything around. It's so different. So she makes that very very vivid for Lady May and Bishop Jacob as they come up and they walk away, Sophia and the lady. And Lady May says to Bishop Jacob, like, they're making it known that they don't like these differences and people are starting to notice and some are confused and some are clear. And as an audience, we have an idea of what's going on, but not yet. So then, you know, Grace is telling Lady May, okay, look, I don't like this any more than you do. Let's play this game of harmony and hope. In about a year, you know, they'll vote me to be the lead. And what I can do is when I have that vote, I can give it to my mom and she'll have the church. And you know, the bishop, he's just like, man, look at y'all working together. You know, that's strange. I don't like the idea of it anyway, but I can't believe that you guys are talking to one another. And you know, Lady May, she's just like, look, she has a point. You know, this is what we need to do to play the game and let's just play it her way and see how it goes. The next scene, we have Lady May, Grace, and one of the female deacons. They're all together and they're in the hallway. And Lady May says to Bob, 
wow, you know, um, that was a good sermon, but not really, because it was just really, really quick. And Bob says, you know, hey, I made sure to tell her to make it quick. And she says, yeah, you know, that reminded me of something I hear on the radio when they give like a quick little sermon in one minute, like a one minute sermon, and it just seemed rushed. And to me, when you're giving a message, you don't want to limit and control what the person or the speaker is trying to say, because then it's on the clock. And Bob makes a very interesting comment in saying, I really want it to be timed and I really want people to get in and out at a certain time and not be in here all day and also when they go to different harmony and hopes across the nation they know and can expect the same thing every Sunday and every lady may just like oh like a McDonald's like everything's exactly the same and that's the way you want it and you know the lady deacon she says well you know if we do that then we can squeeze in you know even a third service and that's even more money going into the collections plate and Bob and her they're just agreeing and they should have just did a high five because they were just agreeing with everything and Lady May says you know I don't agree with that and you shouldn't limit what people say and what people do and Bob you know he could tell he's he's on a mission and he could care less about what she has to say. We then cut to Phil and Grace. They're in Grace's office and you can tell that we've entered right in the middle of a conversation that they already were having because we get in mid-sentence as they're speaking. So clearly they were talking about some other stuff that we're unaware of. But Phil says, nope, that's not a good idea. And Grace says, you know what? I want my brother and my sister to be co-pastors and I would want that for the church. And he says, are you serious? Your brother is mixed up in fraud and your sister almost got arrested for kidnapping because if you remember in the last season, Poor, poor, poor sister of hers was just so distraught and angry that who she was dating didn't want her anymore and her ex-husband and his situation and she had the child and just took off and was trying to follow this guy to go on tour. But you'll have to look at season four to get it, you know, season three to get a recap of what was going on with the brother and the sister. But he says, look, your brother and sister had some stuff going on and that's really not a good look to let them do co-anything. And Grace says, well, let's just change the name. I just want them to get involved and I want them to have a title in the church. And he's just like, no, that's not gonna happen. We then see Bob, he's in Bishop's office as if it's his own. He has his feet up, he's on the phone, and he's making a phone call to his family. He's like, oh yeah, I'll be home soon. And yeah, tell my grandbaby I said hello and I should be home soon. And Bishop walks in and he's looking at him like, is this man really in my office like it's his? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just had to charge my phone and you know, I didn't mean to disrupt or anything. And, oh, and plus my feet hurt and that's why I had my feet up. You know, and he's like, oh no, there's no need to apologize it's okay and there's this silence and the bishop says look I kind of know your style I had a friend named Mike Evans and you know Bob he's like Mike Evans I don't know who that is and <laughs> Bishop says okay let me remind you so Mike Evans was my friend I kind of know how you roll because I did my research and Mike Evans had a back problem and he got addicted to painkillers really really bad so I found out that you told that information to the people who would vote him out and they voted him out but he hurt his back and he got addicted to the painkillers and he was building houses for people that were affected by Katrina so he's letting him know I know your style you dig up dirt on people you bring it to the light in order to take over their church to make it harmony and hope so I see what you're doing and Bob plays this nonchalant attitude of I don't know what you're talking about that church was dwindling anyway that's not how I roll mm. Grace talks to her brother Jared because you know Jared is her estranged brother who she finds out is her younger brother from all of the dirt her mother was hiding in the previous season you can see he's doing pretty well from him for himself he's in his big office he's a councilman now maybe legally and he's just on his phone and talking to her and she's telling him about all this mess that's been happening with the church and he's like look i know you got all these plans and you're saying you're gonna do this and that to be as equally conniving but he says don't go down to that level don't stoop down to that level don't become the snaky deceit Deceitful people that are trying to take you over just keep being grace and she's just like wow I can't believe I'm being schooled by my own brother and he's just like look we're siblings but that's what you need to do don't be 
a snake, don't be sneaky, and don't be deceitful like the people that are in your presence. We got Zora, Carissa, and Jacob. They're unpacking and we can see that they moved out of the house that they were in and they're moving back into the Greenleaf family house. You can see that Carissa is just over it and she's just unpacking like, I don't even wanna be here. And you know, Zora, she's just like, I'm a grown woman now. I need my own space. And I think I'm gonna ask grandma if I can have that house, that cottage house that's on the side, you know, that my, that my loved one used to stay in. And they're like, look, if you ask her permission and she says yes, then you can have it but they said it in a way like there's no way that she's gonna say yes to allow you to stay in there because it's basically like a pool house you know you got your own space it's like a little apartment and that just screams <laughs> unresponsible Zora playground not a good foreshadowing look I'm also happy that Carissa's character grew her hair out a little bit because Carissa and Jacob was starting to look alike after a while. They looked like they was going to the same barber. So I'm glad, whoo, she got a little length and some color in there because she was killing me last season. You got Bob and Phil. They're in Bishop's office and they're talking and they're having a little lunch. And Bob says, look, make sure that Grace is in this office and not her other office before I get back. And he's going to some city and he's, scouting out other areas and Phil says well what exactly are you going to do while you're gone do you need me with you and Bob expresses that he's going to go to all these other churches and all these other places pretty much to snoop and see what's going around for potential other harmony and hopes so you just get an idea that wow he just has this this agenda and his team has, has this agenda to just start taking churches down and turning them into church McDonald's as you can see you got Grace and the rest of the family they're at the Greenleaf house and they're at the table and they're eating dinner and everybody once again is complaining groaning and moaning blaming everything on Grace and who is the top-notch person that's really going in is Carissa Carissa is saying everything was great before you got here my husband would have been this would have been that charity would have been this it would have been perfect and you know bishop he's saying that's not true you know that's you can't say that just because she arrived that all of this stuff started happening just because of her and so charity finds you know a way to kind of tag team team her way in and says you know what yeah you, she's right you know and what are you gonna do to make sure to talk to Bob so me and Jacob can be co-pastors and so we can get up there because I want to preach and everybody looking at her like okay and she's just going on and on and on and Grace just gets up and she's just like, look, I had enough of this. Because you can tell throughout the first half of the episode, she's been working her butt off. She looks fatigued. She's tired of playing all the politics. And she leaves the room. And so Carissa, she's looking at Lady May like, look, I can see that you giving me the side eye you know, to, on the side of this table, but I have every right to spew and talk about how I feel about this situation. I'm a part of this family too, so mm, it is what it is. So she gets up and she leaves to do whatever she needs to do, and Lady May starts talking to Jacob, and Jacob is looking at his mom, and she's giving her that, <laughs> that look like, okay, I know that's your wife, but kind of control what's going on. And Jacob says, well, you know, mom, it hasn't been easy moving back here. <laughs> And Lady May says, easy? You know, what's so hard? The, the, the staff that's cleaning your clothes and cleaning up after you, the 50 acres or the free rent? Which part is hard? And I'm like, oh, shade. <laughs> Lady May, you have to go in on them like that. <laughs> but she basically puts him on notice that, look, be grateful. You're here, you got somewhere to stay, and it's better than where y'all were living before. You got Lady May, and you got Grace in a room, in private. And Grace says, look, I know that we're talking about politics and the church and all this other stuff, but when are we going to have a discussion like mother and daughter? When are we going to address the elephant in the room that I know now who my real father is? When are we going to talk about that? We need to tell the rest of the family too because it's just like keeping this secret and that's what's got that's what got us in trouble in the first place is just keeping secrets and being hush hush about everything and lady may is just like look we'll announce it we'll tell everybody as soon as we get out of this mess with harmony and hope and grace is looking at her like the more we wait it's just gonna get worse but you know lady may that's her way and what she says goes so i don't think they're gonna say anything anytime soon we cut to a scene <laughs> 
This scene had me tripping. We cut to the scene where Lady May, you know, she undressing for bed and she got her lingerie on. She putting on a little lotion. She looking all glistening, you know, melanin popping. And she getting ready for bed and she got her little silk robe on. You know, and Bishop, you know, he walking by and he like, oh, <laughs> oh wait a minute. Hey, uh, baby, um, <laughs> When you, when, when you think you, you know, I'm going to come back to this room. Because, you know, you look you look kind of good. You know, and she's just like, look, um, that's stuff that married people do. And we're not married. And he's like, okay. And she's like, and plus, that's what people do when, when they're in love. And we're not in love. And he's just like, well, okay, well, what, what you want me to do? Because <laughs> I do it. You know, because you in here, you know, with the lingerie on. Like, you know, what's really popping? And she says, look, we're at the courting stage now. And if you want me back, you got to court me. He's like, well, what you want, flowers, candy, a ring? Like, what you, what, what you talking about? She's like, well, basically, yeah. You know, it's like starting all over again. And she just slide into the bed. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and he get that look like, okay, I'm going to do what I need to do to get back in that room now. Keep in mind, y'all, Lynn Whitfield is 66 years old. Old. Okay, I saw that seed and I immediately just started rubbing on myself like this stomach right here. It ain't, it ain't, I ain't no Lynn Whitfield, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It almost made me want to go to the gym. Almost. But I got that pack of honey buns in there that I ain't going to just throw away. You know, I don't want to be wasteful. $3.29. That's a lot going in the trash. But she made me think about it. Go on ahead, Lynn Whitfield. 66 years old making us all look crazy. Zora, Lord have mercy, help her. Zora, she goes to Lady May and just begs that she wants this side house or this pool house and she needs it for her own space. And Lady May is just like, look, you can have it, but you got to go to Bible study. And, you know, Zora's just like, those Bible studies are at 5 o'clock in the morning. And she's just like, okay, well, meet me halfway because that's the rules. And Zora's just like, can we make it 5.30? And, you know, Lady May just says yes and lets her have the room. And I'm like, ooh, once again, this is not good. You know, Zora, she bought that life and she had that little house to herself. That's really not a good, a good idea. You got Charity. She at the, the church, you know, she talking to Phil, drinking some coffee, and she's just like, look, I'm trying to be cold pastor. Nobody's hearing me, and I don't want to be the minister of music, and I need to have this, this role, and I mean, basically, what you going to do? I mean, because Grace, she's probably not fighting for me or not saying what I need to say to defend myself, and he's just like, look, I just... I don't think that's gonna happen. And he could just kind of see that she's just so desperate and kind of all over him. And she's showing her little four inch cleavage and she got that all out. And she's just really kind of slurring and kind of seems like she's not rested and don't really care. And he says, okay, well, you know, um, if you kind of be the ears and eyes for me in your family, then I'll make sure you get that co-pastor role. And she's just like, so you want me to spy on my family? And he was like, no, not spy. Just give me information that I need. And if you give me information that I need and you keep me posted on everything, I'll make sure that you get that role. And I'll make sure that that's what you're doing. And she just kind of gives him that blank look and doesn't say anything at that moment. You got Jacob. And this lady that he mentioned earlier in the episode to Carissa about saying that they wanted him to kind of be like a life coach and someone of inspirational presence to someone. So they're in this office with this guy named Perry. He looks like he's the coach or the assistant coach or maybe PR. We don't know yet, but he looks like he's the lead for this sports team. And he's like, hey, you know, I heard good things about you, Jacob, and I really need you to kind of be that presence. And she's like, yeah, I can vouch for him. He's a good guy and all this other stuff. And he's like, I'm trusting, you know, Jacob, that you got the soul and, you know, your royal oats, you know, out of your system and your party days out of your system because, you know, you're not even a pastor. Like, you're not even, you don't even have a distinct role in the church. So, you know, why should we hire you? And he says, well, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm waiting on an answer by the end of today, and I should know if I'm going to be co-pastor or not. So I really think that I could do this. Woo, a lot of foreshadowing. We talking about a guy, Jacob, okay, that had hoes, gardening hoes, 
in different area codes, okay? Like throughout this series. So not a good look for him to be kind of like hanging around somebody that's in the league. A lot of temptation there. Are we going backwards? Ooh, don't sound good. Grace tells Bob, look, if you don't hire my brother and my sister for these roles, I quit. Like, I'm out. Like, that is the terms. If you don't do that, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. And Bob tells her, you know, I've been watching you since Arizona. And she says, watching me? You know, what do you mean? He's like, no, I just, I just, I just been watching you since Arizona. And I could tell you've always had this gift of, of spreading the word and even radio and journalism. You just, you just have that, that, that gift of, of speaking to people and, and getting a point across. And she was just like, okay, but I need an answer from my family. And he says, ooh, you putting your family before yourself and your career? That's not good. Got Carissa on the couch. She reading the magazine, you know, and Marisol, you know, the maid, she comes in and she's like, look, Lady May wanted me to tell you we do the laundry on certain days. And if you want the laundry done, you got to have, you know, your laundry out on a certain day so the whole family can put their laundry together collectively and so we can get it done. And she's just like, okay, well, fine, I'll do that. So Marisol says, okay, thank you. Jacob comes into the room. He says, look, baby, I got good news. I got this gig. And, and hey, if Gigi gets gives me this position with the church, I'm in, you know, and he kind of gives her that look like, aren't you excited? And she says, Ugh. and he's like, well, what's wrong with you? He was like, so you telling me that the fate or whatever you got going on is based on what Gigi can do? Like, that's not good news. Ugh. And she huffs and puffs and he look at her like, dang, girl, Carissa, you're making it easy. Mm -mm, for the clean up woman mm -mm, to take your man's look girl carissa girl you got an attitude what's really going on with you now zora she's already in that 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 pool house or whatever it is she already got her stuff in there she didn't got comfortable and she talking with sophia and she like girl my daddy you know if he get this job he'll be you know the kind of life coach to this you know ball player named dante and sophia like dante why that sounds so familiar i forgot what his last name is why that sound so familiar oh that's the guy that ran into this statue and he was drunk and all this other stuff she's like well yeah she like girl why are you always going for the bad boys like what's up with that and she's like there you go again judge me and everything foreshadowing <laughs> so sophia says you know what i'm leaving soon you know she preparing to go to school and go to her new residence where she's gonna stay and zora's like i love you i'm gonna miss you girl so they hug it out but we're getting to the last of the episode so you got grace and the rest of the family they're in the house in the living room area and they're talking and she's like okay you guys i got the information from bob and he agreed to make Jace, jacob the co-pastor and jacob's like yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> and you know carissa's just like yay because she's just thinking about oh whatever we need to get up out of this house because she's wrecked to go and so wait a minute you know charity she says wait screw screw um jacob that's good and everything he called pastor but what about me you know what's what about me what about me what about me and you know uh grace she's just like well <laughs> we got him in and that was a fight so you know pump your brakes on that she's like you didn't defend me you didn't try to get me in there and you know Chris is just like well hold up you know Jacob ran a, a church like he's more qualified like he's preached charity was not happening she we don't know if she was tipsy or what but she just said look y'all don't believe in me I'm trying to be a pastor it's gonna happen you'll see you'll laugh and you'll say what you want to say but I'm gonna be a pastor and I'm gonna make it happen and everybody looking at her like okay so she walk off and everybody has had it so the night is coming to an end and you know you got grace she keeps receiving these calls and ignoring them and declining them and we see that there's a name on the screen with noah and we're like okay well why she keep declining that call what's going on she finally answers the phone finally and she answers the phone it's noah so keep in mind noah is sophia's dad okay so noah answers the phone and he's like man i've been blowing up your phone i've been calling you like why don't you answer my calls and she's like you know well what is it and he says i keep getting these collect calls 
you know, from somebody in Arizona. He's claiming to be our son. And, you know, that's the end of the episode. And Grace has this look like, oh, oopsie. <laughs> so we don't know what's up with that. So that's the end of the episode. So let's talk about some key points and some estimates so far and foreshadowing that you should be keeping your eyes on. Zo Zo Zora, she's in that pool house or whatever it's called by herself. She has her eyes on this guy that's a bad influence, Dante, okay? He has a lot of money, so clearly he's on a team and he's already having some issues foreshadowing for some problems. You got Jacob who's had his battles with staying faithful and acting the donkey and being in an environment where you're constantly around people with a lot of money and women and clearly Dante will probably be a bad influence and reel him back into that life that he was trying to get out of. Hmm, a lot of foreshadowing with that. And also the comment that Bob made earlier in the episode twines in with the ending when he said... He's been watching her since Arizona. And Arizona is the same place that she and Noah received collect calls from. It was from a prison in Arizona. So what do you think? Subscribe, leave your comments, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Let me know what you think. Keep me posted. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Same profile now. Name, official bun underscore E. Bye. <laughs>